In this lesson, we're going to learn how to run a job. While pipelines are definitions for how data should be sourced, processed, and written, jobs are the execution definitions of pipelines. We can create multiple jobs out of the same pipeline definition. For example, we may have a job for dev, staging, and prod environments. Let's go ahead and create a job. Before we can create a new job, we need to publish or check in the pipeline. Here, we have the option to publish and create a new job or just publish and close. Let's select publish and create new job. We can provide a description and apply job tags to help us later search and filter our job. We can also enable a job template. This allows for multiple instances of a pipeline to run with different parameters, all from a single job definition. We'll learn more about parameters and runtime variables in a later lesson. Next, we can select a pipeline. Because we created a job from within an open pipeline, the pipeline is already pre-selected. We can, however, choose a different pipeline along with a version of the pipeline we'd like for our job. Let's further configure the job. Here, we can choose a deployment for where we want the pipeline to run. If you want to learn more about deployments, watch the Setup a Deployment lesson. We need to choose the engine labels for this job. When a job executes a pipeline, Control Hub needs to know which execution engine or engines to run the pipeline on for this job. Control Hub knows this by inspecting the engine labels provided in the job configuration. In our case, we'll choose the Dev Data Collectors label. Thus, all of the data collector engines with the label Dev Data Collectors will be eligible to receive a pipeline run request. We can also enable failover. This option allows Control Hub to failover a pipeline instance from one execution engine to another execution engine based on the engine labels configured in the job. An example of a failover is when an execution engine instance goes offline in the middle of a job run. If we look at the advanced options, we see another important configuration, the number of instances. This setting determines the number of parallel pipeline instances to run for this job, one instance per execution engine. For example, if you had five data collector instances with the label Dev Data Collectors and set the number of instances to three, your job will have a pipeline instance running on three of the five data collector instances. It's important to note that the number of instances setting here should be less than or equal to the number of execution engines that contain the configured engine labels. Let's set the number of instances to two here. Other configurations include the number of failover retries per data collector. The default here is minus one, which means unlimited retries. Global failover retries is the maximum number of pipeline failover retries across the entire job. This is also set to minus one, which is unlimited. When a job is stopped, either from the UI, a scheduled stop, or via an API call, Control Hub attempts a graceful stop. If a job does not stop gracefully and is stuck in the stop operation, the pipeline force stop timeout setting determines the amount of time Control Hub will wait before force stopping the job. After configuring the job, we can share a job with a user or a group. Let's start and monitor the job. After starting the job successfully, we can see various metrics and statistics such as stage batch processing time, record count, record throughput, and more. Because we configured the number of instances to two for this job, we see that there are two instances of the pipeline for this job, each running on a data collector. While a job is still running, we can edit the pipeline. Let's go ahead and edit the latest version of the pipeline by making a simple change. And we'll validate in preview to make sure that the changes we made are acceptable.
let's now publish an update. Here, we can choose to update our running job and any other job that is configured with this pipeline with the new changes in the pipeline. We can also create an entirely new job with this new version of the pipeline. After choosing to update, we can see that the job is in an upgrade state where it's upgrading to the new version of the pipeline. We can refresh the jobs monitor and see that the job is on the newest version of the pipeline. In this lesson, we learned how to create a job, configure and run it, and upgrade a job's pipeline version. Now it's your turn to try.